It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. Praise Him from whom all blessings flow. Father, we come to you with no other name but the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We lift up your name, Father, and we submit ourselves to you, to your spirit, your holy divine will. Thank you for your word. And I ask today in Jesus' name, Father, that you'll bless us and use us to bless your name and to be a blessing to your people. Get glory out of our lives, and I pray that you overshadow us with your goodness, with your wisdom, and with the instruction of your word. Strengthen us for your service, we pray in Jesus' name. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. When you speak of, talk about ministries, and ministries don't always just mean preaching. When the Bible talks about some of the, the ladies in, in the book that were, they would come and minister to Jesus, you know. Yeah, that didn't mean they came and taught him. They would, they would render service. And that's what ministry is. Ministry is service. The book, the book speaks of us as being ambassadors of Christ. We, we're representatives of Christ, representatives of the kingdom of heaven. So being in the kingdom is not just, and, and there are a lot of blessings. As the psalmist wrote too, somebody tell me, the, 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 the beginning of Psalm 103. Pray, say it, go and say it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. And forget not what? All his benefits. 
Some people call them perks. They get a job. Some people are positioned. That they want to know what perks comes, come with it. What benefits do certain positions offer when people are seeking employment or whatever? There's so many benefits. But the thing is, these are so, they're different in the kingdom. You don't seek the God's face. You seek God's face because you love him. You want more of him. And it's not just about seeking what the benefit. That's why when people minister, if it were possible at all, whether, they, whether you did something that, that you'd be paid for or not, or what, whatever it is, it's just something you do when you serve God. You would do it no matter what. If you could be of service to someone, whether you are recognized for it or not. Amen. And that's why Jesus taught just y'all, y'all don't bear with me today, aren't you? A little bit. He, he did teach too, don't even give to be seen of men. Don't even make, make long, pretty prayers or whatever it is to, 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 to be seen of men and or to even think that God will hear you because you use a whole lot of words or you're making a long sentence or whatever. You don't do anything to get glory of men. And so I'm going to get my scripture in one of the epistles. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. In the Old Testament, the counterpart to that was how the prophet Isaiah wrote in, in uh, the 58th chapter about, when he was talking about fasting, the spiritual fast, the real fast for God. First, he sort of rebuffed the people. He, he sort of he said, you, you fast, so you do the fast, but you don't really do the natural fast for the right reasons. You fast, he told them, for what? Strife and debate, you know? Sometimes people seek knowledge for strife and debate, or just for the purpose of trying to know something that somebody else doesn't know, or knowing more than others, or wh whatever it is. It's, and it's not about that. It's not about being seen. A believer wants to serve God, and they have this attitude. People who love him. When God has done a work in their lives, they want people to see the anointing of God in their lives. They want people to recognize the spirit of Christ Jesus, that anointing, and give God glory. That's what it's all about. It's all about him. So we're going to read this. Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians, the second chapter. Okay, everybody get it. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's see. Third, Philippians, second chapter. All right. You can start with the first verse. Yes, That'd be good. Yes, sir. If there be, therefore, any co consolation in Christ. Hallelujah. If any comfort of love. Yes. If any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy. Any bowels and mercies. Man, what does that mean? Any bowels of mercies. Extreme deep mercies of God in your life. The tender mercies of, of the Lord. If there's any consolation in Christ, any comfort, in blessing, any blessing of having fellowship, in Christ Jesus, do what? If it's, real, if it's real with you, do what? Fulfill ye my joy. Yes, praise God. ye be like-minded. Thank you, Jesus. Having the same love. Praise God. Being yeah. of one accord. Oh, man. This, of one mind. I believe that, that God's, God's preachers, God's ministers around the world, God's evangelists, God's prophets, God's pastors and teachers around the world, I believe they, are, they want this wherever they are. For the, for, the, for the flock that God has made them under shepherds over. 
that they be of one mind, having the same spirit, the same mind, that they love God, that together they're one in Christ Jesus. They're not divided. Well, people are like their best friends, and I just, what? okay, but they're not all clicked up. And by the way, be careful about your best friend sometimes. Make sure that that, that individual has proven themselves, that you know, that you know that they are a good friend and they will do you, they mean you no harm. Praise God. Be careful who you tell your business to. Because some folks like to hear it just to go tell it. Do you know that's, that, do you know that's why some, a lot of people, some people do, like to talk about other people. It just, it, quite, the, the, the more they can beat them down verbally or put them down, the higher up on the pedestal they feel about themselves. You know? The cleanest believer has dirt. Okay, everybody got skeletons in their closet. Well, some of them might just be in your mind, but they're, they're there. Nobody is better than anybody else. Be careful about friends and who you tell your business to. Be careful. Okay, let's go. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Hallelujah. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Let nothing, now what does that mean? Somebody, somebody tell me, what does that mean? Let nothing, nothing at all be done through strife or conflict or vainglory. Conflict, competition, trying to outdo, vainglory, for just for the sake of recognition. Because some people won't do unless they're seen. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Brothers, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, in humility. Yes, sir. Let each esteem other, what? Better than themselves. Does that mean to put yourself down? No, sir. It doesn't mean that. But the same love and respect that you should have for yourself. That you esteem them, you, 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 you look to them as a brother or sister in Christ. That you're, you're always looking up to them, you respect them highly. No big eyes and little U's. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I will. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So what does that mean? Is the house of the Lord just a place I go? Like some people have homes like this. It's, it's homes. All of us have had kids like that. So, so you know, good kids, sweet kids, loving kids. They start getting a little age on them. They, they think they know the world and the way everything should work in the world, the way things go. And they get old enough to start getting out a little bit. Some just, they look at home just about as a place to come, come to in the evening and eat and lie down and sleep. That's it. And some people look at the house of God like that. It's a place where they're supposed to, they want to they think it's just, and it is a place to find comfort, but that's not all it is. It's not a place just to have your ego stroked. It's not all it is. It's a place that requires your service because it's a place of ministry. It's a place of healing. And it's a place that requires you to, and me, all of us, to participate in it. All of us. And not just for the sake of being seen. There's so few You know, we got young people coming along and, 
and, and it's good. Have your aspirations in life, things you want to do, things you want to accomplish in life. And go get them, but always keep God at the forefront. Always. But it, it, it says this, brother. Go, go, go and read it. Look not every man on his own thing. Mm -hmm. But every man also on the things yes, of Yes, be others. concerned about other people. Yes, oh, Lord God, where is that going? Be concerned about other people. About how other people are living. Be willing to give, to share, to help someone. And, 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 and granted, you know... You, you can't take care of everybody out there. You definitely have to take care of your, your own home. The Bible speaks of that. And God will bless you to take, and to, at least to help others. God will bless you. But will he? Should we even expect him to, to, to bless us when our thoughts are only on ourselves? Just not, not concerned about anything, anybody else. Just us. Just me. What I've got, what I can't get, and my, my family, this and that. But, and, and nobody else. That's not the way life is. That's not the life of, of the kingdom. One man, one accord. Read this. We're going we're gonna to move on. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. who being in the form of God, thank you, Jesus, thought it not robbery to be equal with Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. In the form of God, thank you, Father. Good reader, brother. But made himself of no reputation. Thank you, Father. And took upon him the form of a servant. Yes. And was made in the likeness of man. Hallelujah. Had to be. We're to be like this. With all that God has blessed us to become, it's not just about us and becoming and getting big and bad and great and having, it's not just about that. It's about service to God and obeying God. And that Jesus was, he came and said he was obedient to, to what? Go ahead and read this. Been found in fashion as a man. And was made in the likeness of men. Mm-hmm. And being found in faction as a man, he humbled himself. Yes, he did. And became obedient Thank you, Father. unto death. Praise God. Can we do that? Can we get off our high horses sometimes? Get off our own pride, our own selfish motives and motivations, just to, to love God enough to obey him, to trust him enough to obey God. To take on the, that, that's a servant. All the authority, all the knowledge, all the, 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 the wealth that he possessed that he could have. Man, he could have changed anything if he wanted to. A man who speaks and stops the storm in his tracks. Who speaks and the dead Erased. But he went to Calvary, gave his life, died, shed, he knew what he was facing. Because God so loved the world. And Father, the Father had given him that charge. That was his mission. We all have a mission. We all have responsibility. Not only have we been born into this world for purpose, if you've been born into the kingdom, you've been born into the family, into the kingdom of God for a purpose. And it's not just so God can always bless you. It's not just about that. It's a blessing just to be a part. It's a blessing, man, starting off knowing that you are eternally saved. Praise God, that's a blessing. That you have escaped hell by the skin of your teeth. That the righteous scarcely be saved. That's what, what the book says. Escaped hell, because it's out there. 
because of a decision that God made before the world was ever formed. Because he loved you. But with that great blessing, praise God, born into this, if you want to call it a society of believers, for a purpose. Hallelujah, Jesus, all of us. So when do we serve? We, we, we can't just expect God to, and, and, and people look at him like that. We expect God to just serve us, do for us, be there. And he, and he is, thank God. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Thank God that, that he's always with us. Thank God that he does rescue us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. But we can't treat him like that's, that's all he's, he's for, he's good for. That's sad. You're there to serve me, just to bless me, to give to me. Come on now. Come on. And I thank God that many of you have taught your kids the, the same, that way, you know, to live a life of service. You teach others, kids, to, to serve, to serve God. That's, that's important. What's the motive to turn over to St. John, the sixth chapter? I, I think it's St. John. What is the motive? Let's see. Praise God. And, and thanks every now and then. There's one name I never twist up listen, just get tongue tied some kind of way with it. You know, I never twist up the name Jesus or forget it, forget it or to. But if there's like a, in a holobah and a, in a, a Niger or something like this, some, I might mix those names up or something sometime. St. Saint, Saint John, the sixth chapter. And let's start let's, about the 22nd verse. What, what Jesus was teaching, and I forgot how many people it was, four or 5,000 people. And they, it, was, it was time for them to go home, to go to their houses or whatever. And... Uh, Everybody knows the story about the, about the kid that had five loaves of bread and two fish, two small fish. And Jesus took the, the fish, the bread, he blessed it, and fed about 5,000 people. That is a miracle. And, so many, and after everybody had eaten, baskets of, of, of the scraps and leftovers were taken up. Baskets of food from the blessing of the Lord. I'm telling you, God is amazing. So the next day, the 22nd verse. 22nd verse, St. John 6 chapter. Saints, motive it's important. And it's good to have proper, and you want to see this in your kid. You know it's what the Bible says about how uh, even a child is known by what? His doings. So, so you mean parents ought to have some kind of discernment? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See which way their kids are headed in life? See how they're living, how they're thinking? Yes, sir. But, if they're going to turn out good or bad, you know, and, and if there's something sort of out of pocket, maybe you can get ahead of it. And you can steer them a different way. You can teach them different. But show, don't just yell at them and talk, talk at them. Show them also. You can't teach a child about peace and you raising hell with everybody you run into. You can't. How are you going to convince a child that's the best way to live? Show them. Show them the rewards or the punishments, whatever. 
but teach them. That's discipline. The same goes for adult people. You can tell about what people are thinking, how they're living, but when you can, get, when you can start in, instilling certain values in, in children from a young age, that's a wonderful thing. That's a blessing. And I believe if they are called of God, chosen by God, they might get out of pocket. Sometimes. Some, and, and there's some who don't get too far gone ever, you know. There's some who, they get out of pocket. But they, get, they return. Because they, if, if they're, if they're going to, man, if they are, are chosen for God's life, his kingdom, they won't forget it. They won't forget what you taught them. They won't forget what they've learned. It'll be a part of them. It's instilled in them. They've not just heard about it, they've seen it. They saw that mom and daddy, mom or daddy, whatever, or dad or mom, they saw that they believed this. And it worked for my mom and dad. But you teach them, you show, and, and, and see, the, the, the sad part is, though, now with all that, you can't win them all. Come on. Not all the time. Adam and Eve didn't win them all, did they? King David, he didn't win them all. Son tried to kill him. That's something else. That's, that's amazing. One tried to sort of wrest the kingdom away from who, who God had chosen, who he left for Solomon, for his son. Be, first of all, be faithful. Be dedicated, saints. Be dedicated. To ministry somewhere on, it, it's so very important. Even when it come, comes down to teaching and preaching, Paul told who was one of was Timothy, one of them. He, he said, he, he said, you, you, you teach everybody to how to what to do, how to teach. No. Teach faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Let them in on some things. Those who are able, and so Timothy was to have the wisdom, the, the discernment to, to see well, who's going to be able to teach. Have they lived a life of faithfulness before God? What's been the motivation? It's important. So you have to look at everything. Anyway, after all these people were fed, what, what, five, five loaves? Five loaves and two fish. The next day, 22nd verse, St. John 6 chapter. The following day, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one whereunto his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with the his disciples in the into the boat, but that his disciples gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias, nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that, the Lord has given thanks. They came back looking looking for him. They wanted more. And and granted, some of the people who who returned, they they might have really been looking for more of God's word, more of the teachings of Jesus. They might, they might have been looking for more, but there were some who, who, see, everybody, as Jesus showed us in the parable of the soil, everybody really doesn't want to eat from the table of God. People have different motivations. Some people returned because they wanted to hear more from this man Jesus. Some, some people returned out of curiosity. Some, some returned just, that, just being nosy. Some returned just because they ate good the day before. Be careful what your motive is. And if you call yourself serving God, 
Know that your motive is to really serve God. Okay, let's, let's read. Yes, sir. 24 first. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum. They got in their boats too. <laughs> read it, seeking for Jesus. <laughs> and when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou thither? Now, thither? Man, if they, were, they were talking to the wisdom of God himself. And I don't know, some of them might not have, they, they really didn't believe that Jesus was who he was. That he was the son of God. They didn't really believe that. They, got, they didn't believe that God sent him. Some did, though. Because they would have known that he, he was going to see straight through them if they were putting on the front. <laughs> If they were pretending. And that's the thing about life. You, you can fool people sometimes. You can't even fool people all the time. Come on now. You can't fool people all the time. You cannot. Now, there's some things that God will. And don't, that's, people get the wrong uh, idea about, let's like, say, discerning of spirits. Like the, the man of God is always walking around looking at people and zooming in on their thoughts. and It's just not like that. Not at all. But God opens things up from time to time. That is, he gives them a perception. They thought they could fool Jesus. You can fool a man sometimes. You never fool God. You never fool God's spirit. You don't want to try. And whatever you do, please don't lie. Don't be deceitful. Be open, be honest. Serve God with a, with a pure heart, man. Let it all be about him. Don't try to deceive. You'll get yourself in a lot of trouble. Because the man of God will. He'll see it coming. These people showed up to Jesus. Wait, where, where you been? Where'd you come over here? We, we, we've been looking for you. And some of them, honestly, might have been looking for Jesus because they wanted, they wanted him. But others were just looking for him for the food, and he told them. Yes, sir. So we, we're looking all over for you. They had no regard for the blessing of God what it took for that blessing to take place. That they'd eaten from the hand of God Almighty. They had no respect. No honor. They, they, weren't, they, they, they weren't like overwhelmed with, in a good way. From the operation of God's spirit to provide for 5,000 people with so little. Praise God. Read, brother. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles. You, you, didn't, you didn't come back here because you saw the miracles, because he had, he'd healed people and everything. Sometimes he healed people with his word. He taught them. And some people were really interested and sitting at his feet and, and listening to his word, to his teaching. Some people absorbed it. They loved it. And they loved him. And he said to these people, say, look at you. And, and, that, and that's what people do. They present themselves a certain way. As pretenders. You don't want to be a pretender. Because a pretender is nothing more than what? A, a hypocrite. You don't want to be a pretender. I'm not saying live a loose life. I'm not, no. Well, I want to live and be on, our, on good behavior, be the best we can be, you know, of course. Don't ever think you can deceive God. Please. Please don't do that. 
And he just he called them right out. So you say, so yeah, you, you, you're looking for him to call him a name, but you seek me not because you saw the miracles, but, you, not because you saw the hand of God move. Who else but God Almighty could have multiplied the more they reached into the basket to, to take out bread and fish, it was just replenished within. As God sent a prophet to a woman and, and told her about this, the oil that she had in her house. So it never run out. So you fill every, say, fill up, borrow vessels and, and, and vases and all from your neighbors and fill them up. So I just got a little bit of oil and pour it this, and he blessed it. And that little bit of oil was just multiplied. Into so, so that was the, a miracle of God. Five loaves of bread, two fish. They couldn't respect the fact. They weren't excited about what God did. They were excited about having eaten of it. That's it. We got the benefit. We got the goodies. Praise God. I bet that was the best fish they ever had, too. <laughs> Man, I, I, I like fish. But, but I bet that was the best fish they ever had. I don't know, normally, I guess they baked it back then. Maybe in some cases, they, they use a lot of oil, olive oil, so they probably fried some. Nothing like a good old fried fish sandwich. Nothing like that. So they're the main ingredients, the fish and the bread. And everybody ate. And they couldn't just get, the, get this idea in them. They couldn't see the, the greatness of God. This great blessing, they took that for granted because they were more focused on the benefit of what that miracle produced. They didn't follow him for the, because they saw the mirror. It wasn't about that. They, he said, you follow me because you, you did eat of the loaves and were filled. That was their motive. That's why they were, and, and that's why people seek Jesus out sometimes. That's why people pray to God sometimes. And, and, and we better, as believers, as children of God, you better fall on your face and pray to God if, if you have need. Yes. Oh, yeah. I don't care if it's healing or some uh, material need or whatever it is. But find yourself falling on your face and praying for others at times too. That God would deliver them out of despondency, whatever it is. That God will heal their, their families, their bodies. This whole life is it's not just focused on us. Make sure you have respect to the miracle that God's provided. We have this great life this, that we have now, this great salvation, great interaction and, and faith with, with great fellowship with God. We have this life all because of an empty tomb. Hallelujah, Jesus. God did it. And we take so much for granted because we're too busy eating the product of the miracle. Our focus is on what we can get out of it. You know what I mean? You know, I, hope you, I hope you get it. Yes, Make sure your motives are right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's so very important. Yes, sir. And we said it before, it's also important, dear saints of God, that you remember that. Whatever you do, don't, 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 don't get slothful. Don't get sloppy, don't get slack. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. St. Luke, let me, let me see. Does everybody remember the story? It's not just a story. I'll say the, the history of a recorded incident concerning Elijah. Once he passed away, and they were preparing to bury him. They did bury him. He was dead, and his, I guess his body decayed. Bones were left. And somebody, they were going to the 
burial place to bury another man. Some, one of the locals had died. And they were attacked, they were ambushed by robbers, thieves, bad men, you know. So in the haste, they, they just took the body of this dead. He was dead, he was gone. And they threw it into the, 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 the grave or the tomb where Elijah was buried. And when that corpse hit the body of that consecrated prophet, that man of God, that holy man, he came to life. That's something else right there. That's a miracle of God. Came to life. God is amazing. He's awesome. And we wonder about things sometimes. And this person was asking me, well, was that prophet? Like, was he? And, 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 and I, 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 I think this is a good time. It just came, came to mind, so I'm going to talk about it just a little bit. Was that prophet so holy? Was he so consecrated? that that would happen. He was a holy man of God. He was consecrated to God, covered and filled with God's anointing. Spoke the word of God, the anointing was on him. But he passed away, he was buried. He was holy, but he wasn't that holy. God's anointing. That's the whole thing. And God left a bit of that anointing there for that person. Because what the person wanted to know was, well, could any, say if, if four or five people had fallen in there, would they come to life? Come, if they were dead, would they come alive too? Uh -uh. That's for that person. Come on now. So that's why when you see other people blessed, please don't begrudge them the blessing. If you've been praying about something, if you've been waiting on something, if there's been a need in your life, and, you've been, and you love God, you love Jesus, and, and you live like it. You're not just fronting and putting on. You know you love him. And you're waiting on something. You want God to do something for you. Don't begrudge others their blessing. Yours is there. It's there. David wrote and said, I waited patiently. Didn't you say it? Yes, for the Lord. And some of you have been so very patient. Trusting God while watching others blessed in ways that you need a blessing. And he said this here, Brother Reed, yes, sir. St. Luke 4, and now you can start with the 23rd verse. Yes, sir. And he said unto them, you will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Mm -hmm. And they did. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. Read it. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. Though true. Read, brother. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, mm -hmm. when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the Hallelujah, land. Hallelujah, Jesus. But until, but until none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta. That one, yes, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Yes. There, were all, there were many widows in the city. 
who needed deliverance, they needed help, need, needed food for themselves and their families, their children. And God didn't send Elijah to, to all of them, to two or three of them. He sent Elijah to one. That blessing was for her. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's the way it is with us. Yes, sir. It's same, and the same when it talks about Naaman, the Syrian, and yes, cured of his leprosy. Yes, sir. And he almost walked out on that. He, he almost messed that up himself. Sometimes we do. We mess up our own blessings. You yes, went away in a rage. When, when this king told him to go, he had heard from, from a, a, a slave, I guess, Hebrew, that there was a man of God who, who God hears, and he's in Israel, and he, he can be healed if he'll go, go see him and talk to him and he'll pray for him. So he sent Naaman to him. And Naaman brought all kinds of goods and monies and about, I think about 40 some odd camels worth of stuff. And his servant came out to, to greet him and gave him the remedy for his healing, which was something he had to do but Elisha told him to go tell him to dip himself how many times? Seven times in Jordan, in Jordan River. And his flesh come clean. He'll be healed. And he got upset. He got angry. He was, he was angry because he thought it, he, the, 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 the prophet should have come out and talked to me himself. And stuck a rod and done, just done some theatrics did a big presentation. <laughs> Call up the thunder and the lightning and man. And recover the leper, I would have been healed. You see, he sent you <laughs> to go tell me to, to bathe in a nasty river. And he went away in a rage. He almost missed his blessing. Saints, when we walk away from God's word, come on now, when we walk away from God's message, how many times even in marriage, when people are having, say, difficulty or whatever, and we have complaint, this or that, or he this, he this, she this, she that, are you doing what you're supposed to do? Are you both doing what you're supposed to? Are you walking away from instruction? If you get instruction concerning something in your life, not just marriage, but if you get instruction, and God, he'll send instruction concerning any and everything, please make sure you obey it. He walked away from God's word, but they convinced him to come back. And he did. He bathed, bathed in, 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 the, in the river, and his flesh came clean and smooth like a baby. God can heal anything. God can restore anything. God can multiply all your assets, everything. He spoke everything into existence from nothing, didn't he? Yes, sir. He can do it. Yes, sir. Open doors and things. You got, you got to be willing to go through the doors. Yes, that blessing right there, though, was for, for Naaman. That particular blessing wasn't for all the widows. It was for that one woman. And that's the, that's in St. John 2, I believe. How the angel stirred the waters. Yes, sir. That blessing wasn't for everybody gathered around the pool. This was the first one to get in. But on that particular day that's recorded in the book, 
Two people got healed at least. The first, whoever got in the pool first, God didn't take that out. And the man that Jesus healed. See, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12th chapter. Starting with the 20th verse. All of us have something to contribute to the body of Christ. All of us, some way or another, have something that God has done to us, with us, in us, that he's instilled in us, that we can contribute to ministry. We all serve. All of us do. And it talks about the body of Christ being many members, many members, but one body as our bodies. Many members, but one body. And it all works together. And just, just read, brother. Just read. But now are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, Come on. I have no need of thee. Listen. Nor again the head to the feet. It, I have no need of thee. Can, can, can our bodies speak to each other like that if they could? We can't say to different members of the body who might not serve in the same capacity, the same function as we do, They might not hold the same office. They might not participate in the same kind of ministry that you do. But we can't rule them out and say that I have no need of you. You're not doing what, what I do, so I don't need you. I'm privileged to look down on you. You're less than I am. No. No. Our bodies are to work in perfect harmony, yes, sir. Yes, sir. each member with the other. Yes, and the body of Christ is, is to work and operate the same way. Yes. Everybody has a function in ministry. Lord have mercy. Eyes, nose, feet, skin. Fingers, organs. What would the body be without the heart? The brain. The digestive system. I mean, it, it all works together. The body works in perfect harmony with itself. And we all have a function. We all have a part. And we can't say that, uh, how many of you heard me say this? Because it's true. We all need each other, saints. All of us do. We need each other. And we all have something. There's no way any believer should, to, should even begin to let the enemy trick them with that thought or feeling, anything, like they have nothing to offer. Yes, you do. If you, if you didn't, you, you wouldn't be here. Praise God. Brother, let's read this. We're going to close out. Nay, much more of those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Get that now. Please get that. That's the truth. Read it. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable. Hallelujah. Upon these we bestow more Thank abundant you, Jesus. honor. Jesus. Yes, read it. And our uncomely parts have more our comely parts. Mm -hmm. yes, Go ahead. For our comely parts have no need. But God has tempered the body Thank together, you, Jesus. having given more abundant honor Listen. to that part which lacks. Hallelujah. Read it, brother. That there should be no schism, schism. in the body. What is schism? Division. Division. There should be no division. Wherever there's division, there's confusion. 
Confusion is not of God. Division is not of God. Separatism is not of God. Not, not, in, not in the body. The body is one. So, and there should be no skill, no, no division in, in the body. But that the members should have the same care for one another. Yes. That we should love each other. And it shouldn't matter what we look like, what we dress like, We're part of each other. All believers are members. They're part of the body of Christ. And nobody should be, oh, see, we, we don't, in, in the kingdom of God, it sort of, it, it doesn't care about society's norms at all. So, some people are so interested in just, and that's some people do, all right, okay, it's fine. But just some people just live for prestige. That's pride. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes, Life is prestige. It's not about that. It's not about that. Shouldn't be in any way where, where in, in, in a church, not God's local churches, wherever they are, But people don't speak to each other, don't talk to each other. That's satanic, that's, that's devilish. If my hand is injured, I'm going to try to comfort and help it with the other hand. If I fall, the rest of my body is going to try to come to its own rescue to lift me up. That's the way we, ha we have to live, saints. And serve in the ministry of God as one. And everybody needs to serve. Yes, everybody does. Yes, Let's read. We're going to close out. And whether one yes. member suffer, all the members suffer Listen, with it. it. Wait, does that yes, mean that, brother? Yes, sir. Okay, does that mean if Sister Shirley gets sick, I want to go, if she catches a cold, I'm going to go over to Sister Shirley's and get it too. Uh-uh. You better get away from me, so Shirley. <laughs> get away from me. <laughs> Put a mask on your face and on the back of your head and everything. Just <laughs> so we're not <laughs> no. It doesn't mean that. But we should feel each other. That's right. Yes, sir. And I shouldn't rejoice in the fact, even though okay, we thank God for our health whatever amount of health that we have. But I shouldn't feel good in a sense that I don't have a cold, but she does. Come on now. Something else might be going on with you. And, and I say that because there's some, sometimes you hear people say without thinking about a, a, a person's situation, their life, their family, their health, their strength, you might not be going through exactly what they're going through, but you got something going on. And people are quick to sort of look like, uh, to say things to make you feel like I'm a little better than you because I don't have that. I'm not. That's not the way the body of Christ operates. If one number's down, that means we get down in prayer with them. That we earnestly pray for them and we see them healed. If they fall, and they're brother and sister in Christ, ye, the Bible says, ye which are spiritual do what? Restore such a one. In, in the spirit of meekness, lift them up. Pick them up. That's God's way. Praise the Lord God Almighty. We're going to go home. If one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Of one member be honored. All what? the members rejoice with it. That's good, brother. All the members rejoice with it. If one person is blessed, God blesses it, or they exceed it in something because of and all, all blessings, everything, you're, you're good at successes, all, everything comes from God. Please remember that. 
if you're doing well, say, bless me, God, if somebody's doing well, we don't envy that person. We don't even think that I wish that were me. I know that's theirs. Come on. That's their blessing. We don't covet each other's blessings. But we live with, with the hope and we we'll praise God, sister, brother. I, I'm happy for you. I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm waiting on mine. So God's, he's still in the blessing. God is, his, his word is still in force. And there are many who have. Y'all read, go back to Kings and read the, the story of this lady. There was one lady. She was a, a widow. And the creditors had come to take her kids. Her sons had two, two boys, I believe. And uh, this uh, it's so much... So many life lessons in this Bible, and so and, and so much went. All of it points to God's goodness and God's faithfulness. God doesn't forget a person's work and labor of love. Never. The creditor come to take this widow's son, her son. Why? Because you know if, they had to fall, if, if you owe money, so a person died and you you were left you left here and you left debt. The creditors would take your kids and put them to work in servitude for about six years or so, or to the uh, year of Jubilee, whatever, to they, unless somebody redeemed them. And <laughs> they were going to take everything she had, and her kids. Why? Because these two boys get a lot of labor. They could work the dead off. Get a lot of labor out of them. I think that was a woman. Somebody get that right look that up for me. Make sure the one with the, was that the pots of oil? Which one? Yeah, that, that was the pots of oil. God blessed her. And the oil, it just kept coming. Debt all cleared, all her creditors paid, everything. God can do it. But she was a widow. Read the beginning of that. We're gonna close. God will not forget you. Amen. Believe that now. Second Kings. Okay, fourth Kings. chapter. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Listen, thy servant, my husband, is dead. So that, that should wake us up right there. God is, he, God is so good. God is so awesome. He, he'll never. I know people go to the grave trusting God, believing God, looking for God's blessing, redemption. People go to, to the grave looking for healing, expecting yes, to be healed. Yes, and this lady, I'm sure she was a, a faithful wife, not just I'm talking to the, about the prophet, but in ministry faithful daughter of Israel. She loved God, I'm sure. And she said, read it again. Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Hallelujah. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. Thank you, Father. And the creditors in co is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. Yes. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Mm -hmm. Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Isn't that something? What do you have in the house? Pick up on all these little things. She knew what her situation was, but he said, What do you should see in your mind? What do you have in your house that God, we, we ask God to touch, bless, multiply? Always acknowledge what you have, saints. Yes, sir. Everything you have is a gift from God. Yes, sir. Re read it, brother. And she said, The handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Uh -huh. Then he said, 
go. Borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Of everybody. Go around the neighborhood and get pots. Yes. Even okay. empty vessels. Mm -hmm. Borrow not a few. Go ahead. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door. Hallelujah. Upon the, the and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out unto all that those vessels. And you're going to fill all the vessels up out of this one little cruise of oil that you have. Praise God. God's always doing something. Yes. God is amazing. And he, that was the hand of God. That was the, a miracle from the Lord. And she yes, did. Sir. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. Read. And she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels Thank to you. her, and she poured out. Thank you, Father. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her sons, Bring me yet a vessel. Hallelujah. And he said, and he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. There's no more to fill up. And what happened? And the oil stayed. It stopped right there. No more poured out, poured out. That's the work of God. That is a miracle of sustaining, taking care of his own from God. Yes, sir. Use what you have. Yes, sir. Acknowledge what you have. Pray over with appreciation whatever it is you have. We're quick to talk about the loss and what we don't have. Okay, you know your situation. But know your God too, okay? Yes, sir. Know your God. You. Yes, sir. God. And the oil stopped, yes, just stopped pouring out. And, and then she took the, the money. And what happened? Read that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna then she right came there. and told God. And he said, go, sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. Praise God Almighty. You got money. You have money left over to last year. God knows how to work things. You know whose wife that was? She said that uh, the, they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah said, thy servant, thy servant, my husband is dead. And you know how he did feel? The, Elijah knew, knew her husband. We thought we had that before, I believe. Obadiah. Obadiah, how he, he hid when Jezebel was destroying and killing, killing off the prophets. He hid a hundred prophets in, of, of the Lord in caves. Because he feared God. The, the, wherever that is, I think that's in Kings 2 somewhere. He feared God. He loved God. And Elijah knew. He told Elijah. Because Elijah told him, you go tell the king to meet me, uh, King Ahab to meet me at a certain place. And he said, wait a minute. You know Ahab is... He's looked all over for you, and he's going to kill you when he sees you. you. And if I go tell him that you're going to be down on 10th Street, and if he goes down there to meet you and look, say, I don't know if the Lord's going to pick you up and take you off somewhere or what, and you're not there, he's going to kill me. He said, now nah, I'll meet him. <laughs> he was Obadiah. Right? He, he had the prophets of the Lord. He was a student of the prophets. He learned from them. They, and, and he was a faithful man. And his good works were not forgotten. Well, he did. He passed on. But he, his work was not forgotten. God will never forget your good works. Never. And there's more, so much more in here. We're, we're going to let it go. Praise God. Saints of God. Young people. Fathers, mothers, encourage your children. You, you, you wonder sometimes, you, you look around and you wonder who's coming after us. I can't help but, you can't help but think about it. Who's coming of what sort? People want to be ballers and everything, you know, just the heads in the wrong places, attitude. And you, you wonder, you know, please. And some of you have served God from your youth. That one, that, so tell you, y'all were young. Y'all weren't youth anymore. <laughs> Andrew was nine. She started, uh, <laughs> but young. 
People serve God in the 20s, 1920 years, deacons, faithfully serving God, looking for something to do, to participate in. Lord have mercy. And people run today. People start serving. They, they'll say, and, I, and that's why some, it used to irritate me. It doesn't bother me so much because I, I understand. To hear people say, well, I was born in the church. Well, what have you done the whole time? Come on. What have you done? Where have you been? Come on. Praise the Lord. Listen. I will dwell in the house of the Lord if it was just a place where I come and lay my head. David, wasn't talking about, David was talking about service. I live in God's house. I will serve in God's family. I'll serve in God's kingdom. That's what it's all about. It's not just about what I can get out of the Lord. Because I know God has given his best and will give him the best of everything. I know he will. Gave his son for us. Praise God. You know he will. The Bible says, how shall he not, if he gave his son for us, how shall he not with him freely give us all? He will. But our desire should be the things of God. Everything else falls in place. Everything else will come. It falls in place. But where's your service? God's looking for that. Praise God. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's go home. Let's thank God for his word. Let's, let's give Jesus a big hand. Think, saints. Do some think. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.